Good night, America. A second generation TV news magazine. Tonight with our guest, Dr. Frederick Leboyer, discussing his film, Birth Without Violence. And two women who were admitted informants for the Internal Revenue Service talk about sex spying for the IRS. We have documentary footage of Lenny Bruce, and his daughter Kitty talks about the Lenny who never got nominated for the Academy Award. Then we're joined by two men who have been nominated for a Tony Award. The stars of the Broadway hit, Sizway Bonzi is Dead. And finally, there is a revealing interview with former prize fighter Reuben Hurricane Carter behind bars. I'm Don Imus. Now here's the anchor man for Good Night America, Rollo Rivera. Hello again, thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Before I tell you more about tonight's program, I have a few things I'd like to say about the last two editions of Goodnight America. In both of those programs, as I think most of you know by now, we talked about the facts and the circumstances surrounding the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. The response to both those programs was unprecedented. In the last month alone, we've received thousands of letters, and they've been virtually unanimous in their calls for a reinvestigation of the murder of John Kennedy. Now, the only dissenting voices in this have come from either former members of the Warren Commission staff or, ironically to me, from some of the newspaper critics who write about television shows. One of them asked, with a great deal of self-righteousness, why dredge up an 11 and a half year old murder? Well, the answer to that question, as you've made clear with your letters and your participation in this program, is that the American people want to know the truth about the death of the young and gracious 35th President of the United States. So with your support, we renew our call for an intensive, objective, nonpartisan congressional inquiry. Okay. Now, let's move on to tonight's program. IMIS has already given you the headlines. I'll just kind of fill in a little bit and run down the list of what we have tonight real quickly. It's a, it's a potpourri, a real potpourri. Among the topics we'll be talking about, we'll be talking with two women who were secret agents for the Internal Revenue Service. And now that we've all filed our income tax returns, we'll examine one method that the IRS may have been using to pry loose some of its information. It's certainly one of the seediest aspects of the tax agency's work. And then it's on to Lenny Bruce, the real Lenny Bruce. We have films of some of his actual performances, and we'll be talking with his daughter Kitty. Then there are three more segments, and what I told you is going to be a real mixed bag. Sizwe Bonzi is Dead is the name of the best play on Broadway. And here to show you and to talk about the harsh realities that it portrays will be both members of its cast. And finally, we'll conclude this edition of Goodnight America with the portrait of a man serving a life sentence for murders he says he didn't commit. It's the life and hard times of Reuben Hurricane Carter. But Dr. Le Boyer, in a revolutionary method of delivering babies called birth without violence, is first, and I'll try my best to explain it to you. When a baby's born in a modern hospital, the first thing it sees, or I should say experiences, is a bright, brash, noisy operating room. The baby is helped out of the mother's womb by the doctor, and the next thing that happens is that it's lifted by the ankles and smacked on the backside. And after that, it's crying to beat the band, then it's wiped off with a rough cloth, and then it's plunked down on a cold metal scale so the mother can see how much her baby weighs and go ooh and ah with everybody else in the operating room. Now, of course, all these things are done in kindness, but according to Dr. Le Boyer, there's a better and more considerate way to deliver a child. The way he does it, the room is quiet, the lights are dimmed, and everything is done that can be done to ensure the baby's comfort. And according to the doctor, it makes all the difference in the child's future mental health. Take a look.
You see, the whole point is that, and what we've been missing until now, is that a young baby, even a newborn baby, is fully conscious. It is a very sensitive little being, and I would even say a very highly intelligent little being, but which cannot express, or rather which is expressing, but not in our terms. It is unconditioned. This little being, when it is crying, screaming, expressing with his whole body, definitely is expressing, and is trying to say something, which very simply is, but all this is horrible. It is unbearable. Stop, 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 stop. Do you think that a baby born in, in, in kindness rather yes. than trauma yes. uh, will have a completely different approach to life? You think that even though the child really has no conscious memory of the event, that it would make some it real has. difference? But it is an unconscious memory. People are always afraid of whatever is new. And all I've been trying to do was just to make this coming from one condition into a new condition, something smooth and therefore pleasant. So that the general attitude is, oh yes, oh yes, this is new, that's marvelous. Oh, all this, I can move, I can stretch. And you can see this in the film, this tremendous surprise of this baby with the eyes wide open, feeling, oh, what is this, what is this, what is this? And if on the contrary, it is, it is, made, it is made to be a shock, what is called a traumatic experience, the general response will be, oh, too much, too much. And the child will close up, will refuse, will try to cling to the past, and always will be terrified by whatever is new. I'm going to tell you a little story, which is going to make my point very clear. One of these women who had a baby at my clinic uh, was in perfect health. The child was three months old, and she was working in a creche, you know, where you leave the, the children when uh, women go to work, to work as a yeah. So she felt, I'm all right, my baby's all right, I will resume my work, I will start working again, and since I'm working with children, I will take my baby along with, along with me, because she knew that it's not good for a baby uh, to be separate from the mother, and so she did. Two days after she had started working, the baby felt sick, vomiting, refusing food, diarrhea, very soon very severe dehydration, and the condition was so serious that the life of the baby was at stake. And it was said this baby must be taken immediately to a hospital for intensive care and so on. But a friend of this young woman said, your child is not sick. Don't take this baby to a hospital. This baby is jealous. I said, what do you mean? Three months old, jealous? Yes. This baby cannot tolerate that you are looking after other children. She says, it's impossible. Yes, this is so. Try, go home. And she did so because she trusted this friend. Within two or three days, without any medical treatment, everything was over. And the child was perfectly all right again. Now, can you imagine, can you believe that a three-month-old baby can be so disturbed by jealousy, which shows only that first, there is deep emotional life in these young beings, and that the emotional aspect of things is at least as important as the physical aspect.
at least quite sure that if possibly it has got no effect, at least it cannot harm. And I'm sure I know from experience and from facts that the effect is very deep and everlasting. criticism of Dr. Le Boyer's method comes predictably from the medical establishment. The head of obstetrics at a major hospital here in the city, for instance, has dismissed Le Boyer's ideas as cultish nonsense. The department head pointed out that, for one thing, the bright lighting is necessary to see if the birth has been without complications. Well, to that, Le Boyer points out that the vast majority of deliveries are normal and that, in any case, he would be the first one to hit the light switch if anything looked wrong. Well, whether or not his method really does make a difference, and I think it does, the newborn baby sure seems to enjoy it more his way, and after all, whose recommendation is most important? We'll be right back with the IRS Follies right after this. <laughs>